In this video, we'll cover depth passes in Redshift for Cinema 4D and how to use them to create a depth of field effect in post. So after you've modeled, animated, and textured your scene, it's time to finalize your camera placement and start to put in some AOVs uh, for compositing. And in this case, we're going to be adding a depth pass to our scene so that we can add a depth of field effect in post. So the first step is going to be to add a Redshift camera tag to your camera. The next thing we're going to want to do is to set the focal point of our camera. And there's a couple ways we can do that. We can dial it in manually in our camera settings using the focus distance. But in this case, I want something a little bit more precise that gives me some control. So I have a null in my scene called focus here. And you can see it's right where I want my camera to focus. So I'm going to go back to my camera settings. I'm going to drag the focus null into the focus object. The next step is to add the depth pass AOV. So we're going to open up the Redshift AOV manager. And I'm going to pull the depth pass to this box on the right. You'll select the depth pass. And we're going to change the depth mode to Z normalized. Now we're going to switch the Redshift render view to bucket mode so we can see our depth pass. and then. We're going to change it from Beauty Pass to Depth. And here you can see our grayscale image starting to form. The blackest points of the image are where the camera will focus. The whiter points of the image will have a, a stronger depth of field effect. So that's important to keep in mind moving forward. Once we've added our depth pass, we're going to close out of the AOV manager and open up our render settings. You're going to want to set a destination for your render and also make sure that you checked multi-layer files so that the AOV and beauty pass are contained in the same file. I'm just going to render an image for now. And so then you're going to hit render and we're going to go over to After Effects. So in After Effects, I've created a new composition using the image I rendered from Cinema 4D. And it should be a multi-layer file. And so the way we're going to extract our depth pass from this EXR is to apply the extractor effect. We'll go up to the layers option and select depth. And now we can see our depth pass and hold on. Let me duplicate the layer, delete the extractor effect. So we have our beauty pass on the bottom here, depth pass above. I'm going to pre comp the depth pass. Just call it depth still. And I'm going to dive into our pre comped depth pass and just adjust the white point to 0.5, maybe 0.25. You could even clamp down the blacks a little bit to make a little bit more contrast. But for this case, I'm just going to leave it at zero. So I'll hop back over to our main comp. So after we set up our depth pass, we're going to create an adjustment layer. I'm going to call one layer uh, FL depth of field, and then I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to name the other layer AE depth of field. Now I'm going to do one option using a third party plugin, and then one option using the standard stock uh, After Effects camera lens blur. So let's break down both. First, I'm going to show you the third party plugin, mainly because I think it achieves a much better result. So let's click the FL depth of, depth of field layer. So we're going to select our adjustment layer. And I'm going to apply the FL depth of field effect. Again, I'll provide a link in the description to the website that has this third party plugin. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is select depth layer and choose depth still. Now nothing happens right away. We need to select our focal point with select depth. And then I'm going to start to turn up the radius. We'll turn it up to we'll turn it up to 35 for now. The first thing I notice is that we're not getting a, the proper look on the edges of our objects. So that means we need to invert the depth map. So I'm going to go to depth buffer and click invert. Now everything goes blurry for a second. We need to reselect our focal point 
and boom, now we're getting the proper look. So it's important to remember that if it doesn't look quite right, if you're getting some weird edges on our objects, you need to invert your depth mat because different plugins will interpret the depth mat different ways. So uh, it's important to double check that you're processing the depth mat correctly. Next, I'm gonna go to Iris and I'm just gonna change the aspect ratio of the depth of field a little bit. I'll go to negative 0.33. I just think it gives us a nice anamorphic blur. I find it a little bit nicer than just a, a normal round depth of field bouquet. Now, if this were an animation, uh, you could keyframe the focal point as you move through your sequence so that the focus changes throughout the scene. So for example, I could go and I could select the elephant in the back here, and now the elephant is the focal point of the scene. And that's what's really nice about this plugin. It makes it so easy to just switch back and forth. But remember, you're going to get the best results where you focused in Cinema 4D because that's where your depth mat is pointing to. The third party plugin will help you choose other locations to focus on, but you're going to get your best results using uh, the Cinema 4D focus point. All right, so that's it for the third party plugin. There's a lot more to cover about that particular plugin, but we'll save that for another time, or you can look it up on the website, whatever you want to do. All right, so I'm going to turn off this adjustment layer. I'm going to select the After Effects depth of field layer and apply the camera lens blur and then go to blur map, select the depth still. I'm going to turn up our blur radius a bit, hit repeat edge pixels, and then adjust the blur focal distance. It looks like I need about 51 till our object is in focus. And that is how you use the After Effects stock camera lens blur. Uh, clearly the third party plugin gets a much better effect, but it is possible in stock After Effects. And so that's it. That is a quick breakdown on how to use the depth pass in Redshift for Cinema 4D to apply camera lens blur in post. If this was helpful in any way, please throw me a like and I'll see you in the next video.